Well, you look at that. They've removed one foot at the factory for your short-circuiting convenience. <laughs>Hey, what's happening, guys? Happy night before Thanksgiving. I uh, hope you guys are having a good day. What I've got for you today is this beauty right here. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, indeed. It's the DP 30 volt 5 amp dash L. It's a buck converter, a, you know, a small desktop power supply. And this is from Rui Dang, which is the same company where I got this beauty from. And although that original 50 volt 5 amp unit was from Banggood, uh, this is from Alice 110 1983 off of eBay. And if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know one thing. I like my buck converters. I have many of them. I mean, there's one, two. The other one's three. You saw the DPS 5005. That's four. There's a couple more. In this box of goodness here but they're fun to play with they're useful to have around if you know if you need an LED driver boom you grab one of these guys you're good to go now what I like about Rui Dang is that they come with some instructions and some information so if we take a look here we can see input voltage range 6 to 40 volts output 0 to 32 volts input current 0 to 5.1 amp output range, 0 to 160 watts, output voltage resolution, 0 0.1 volt current resolution, 0 0.001 amp, output voltage accuracy, 0.5% plus one digit plus or minus, blah, blah, blah. Now this ripple marking here, ooh, 40 volt to 32 volt is 5 amp, about 100 millivolts peak to peak. We're gonna check that out. That's that's a lot of ripple. And our size 85 by 58 by 31 millimeter. A um, little bit of info on how to set it. But let's uh let's take a closer up close look at it and see exactly what it's made from because I have a feeling it's not sugar spice and everything nice. All right, let's get in here and take a look at the board because there are some somewhat interesting features you're going to find here and the first one is this i know you guys probably can't read it but it says 32f100-c8t6b which is an arm cortex m3 32-bit processor i was somewhat surprised to find that here and if we go up here we have this j652 which is a p channel 60 volt 28 amp MOSFET and then we have the RBO 85T which is a linear regulator now we also have this guy here and this guy here which are um, rail to rail dual precision op amps SGM 858 2x58 and then we have this one here which as far as I can tell, I'm having trouble finding the exact information on 25A THM is ESD protection. So that's pretty cool in itself. Now, if we take a look at our <laughs> capacitors, JKEC input capacitor. Oh, they probably like it a whole lot better if you can see what I was pointing at, huh? JKEC send. Oh my god, I can't talk again. Shenzhen Market Flavor of the Week. That's our input cap, and it is 470 microfarad, 50 volt. Over here on the output, we've got a 470 microfarad, 50 volt, 470 microfarad, 35 volt, and... This big black one's another JKEC. And the green one. Yeah, I have no idea what the hell the green one is. I can't read it. So we've also got two of these um, seven segment multi-digit, four digit uh, clock style 
displays and then we've got four buttons minus in plus out how's that one say set and on off we've got a nice thick current shunt here there is a diode and the back of the board is basically blank so I guess our next trick is to fire it up and have a look but hey look here could that possibly be a JTAG header for programming and accessing the microcontroller could this be hackable possibly power it up and according to the instructions included output current zero calibration we hold the set button in while we apply power so holding the set button applying power and that should zero everything out I'm gonna turn off this light over here maybe that gives you guys a better view that says off 0.0, .0. good so if we hit the set button we are getting this is our voltage and I believe this is our current okay why'd you do that oh probably because I waited too long all right so we'll set our voltage for five volts and we're going to set our current for two amps which is kind of the maximum that I have on this um, power supply that I'm using it's just a little uh, switch mode power supply 12 volt to 2 amp now I know that our little boost or buck converter here can kick up the voltage a little bit I'm gonna hook up these wires I'll be right back okay what I meant to say before I hooked up the wires was it can kick up the current a little bit not the voltage it's a buck converter it trades voltage for current but anyway so we're hooked up now 5 volts and I can adjust the current here on my load and you can see at 2 amps the constant current light comes in if we drop down we have a constant voltage light so we also have this in and out we can click that button you see the light up here comes on that is our input voltage 12.13 then we click here our out that's our output and at 1.6 amps we're getting 4.98 volts so let's hook up whoops the oscilloscope probe and take a look at what the actual ripple on this is and I just unplugged it again all right give me a second folks okay those teeny tiny little USB wires are a little pain in the ass to mess with but I think we got it we're showing 4.99 volts 1.59 or so amp and if we swing up here and take a look at the oscilloscope well you can see that we're getting some substantial noise there wow so I'm gonna try and freeze this nope all right so let's bring out our cursors and we want the cursor for voltage and we'll start with our starting one it's going to put that on about the lowest point there and our ending cursor about the highest point there and if you take a look right here you can see we're getting 2.8 millivolts of ripple there so let's turn off our cursor menu bring this guy back on man we're getting a lot of noise oh hell something is not playing nice here I 
having trouble. I don't know what's going on. I'm losing my contact here or something. Let me try and... All right, I'm going to have to come back in a second. Well, there's your problem right there. That terminal strip has almost completely separated... From the solder pad can you see that all right give me a second to uh, whip up a little fix for this real quick and we'll be back and we'll try this again uh, the Chinese quality in this is surely shining try and reflow that maybe This is not giving me a great confidence boost. Yeah, that's totally off of there. All right, well, here's what we'll do. Let's see if we can't solder these wires directly onto here for now. And that'll at least give us a way to test this thing out. As horribly disappointing as this is turning out to be. Wow. This may be the worst uh, Chinese power supply I've ever gotten. All right, let's see if it's working now. Yep. All right, so let's get our oscilloscope probes back on here. Make sure we're not shorting anything all right that's much better now we actually can see okay now we can see the ripple much better bring in our cursors for voltage else whoops wrong button Cursors for voltage, our start cursor, we'll adjust there, and our end cursor, we'll adjust there. So 2.4 millivolts of ripple. And remember that that is at 5 volts at 1.7 amp. Now let's turn this bad boy up. Bring it up to our complete 2 amp. Okay, 2 amp. We're in constant current. We're down to 3.45 volts output. We'll come back to the oscilloscope here. And let's check our ripple again. We'll adjust our starting cursor to the lowest point and our ending cursor to the highest point 2.72 so the ripple in this is actually not terrible but I am not pleased with that terminal strip but I can replace a terminal strip that's not a big deal. All right, let's try something else. Okay, here's a more resistive load, a light bulb. We'll set our voltage 
up to the 12 volts it likes. A little bit of insulation there. So there we go, we have 12 volts at 445 milliamps. Let's uh, get the oscilloscope out here and see if we can take a better look. Okay, so with a purely resistive load on here, we're seeing a lot of noise and some spikes but our ripple is definitely lower because we're going to ignore the spikes and the noise and just home in on what we got here and we're looking at 1.6 millivolts which is a very good in my opinion. So that's going to finish this out for our look at this Rui Dang power supply. Um, I'll put a link to it down below, but it is the DP30V5A-L. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment and share. Don't forget to subscribe. And a big thanks to all my patrons. Patreon, Patreon money is what we use to purchase this. That's it. I'm out. Peace.